From KUNC and the NPR Network, this is In the NoCo. I'm Erin O'Toole. Like many cities in Colorado, Boulder has an ongoing, almost legendary shortage of housing for the middle class. The median home price hovers around a million dollars, which means many people who work in Boulder can't afford to live there. One local group has an unusual solution. They want to get rid of Boulder's municipal airport and turn that land into a neighborhood with about 2,000 homes. At least half of those homes would be designated affordable. Laura Kaplan is with the Airport Neighborhood Campaign. They're the group which organized the two initiatives that would put this plan into action. They've collected enough signatures to place them on the November ballot. She's also a member of the city's planning board, although she stresses this campaign isn't an official stance of that board. And she joins us now. Laura, welcome to In the NoCo. Thank you, Erin. It's great to be here. So supporters of the campaign you're working on say this offers a -a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to build affordable housing in Boulder, which the city desperately needs. Why is closing the municipal airport the best way to go about this? So what the airport offers as a unique opportunity is a very large piece of city-owned land. Here in Boulder, we are very constrained in our development, and that is by design. We do not sprawl. We annex only very selectively and usually very small parcels. And because the airport is 179 acres of city-owned land, if it were repurposed, that is an opportunity to do things almost from the ground up. There is some infrastructure in place. There are some roads and streets in place. And the fact that it is city-owned land means that we can do things differently and we can use the value of that land to trade for the housing outcomes that we so desperately need. Building middle-income affordable housing on private property is almost impossible in the city of Boulder just because of the economics of development. And you make such an interesting point that Boulder is almost like an island that can't grow outward because it is surrounded by mountains or preserved open space. Yes, and that is one of the things that people love about Boulder is that we deliberately preserved this green space, uh, open space belt around the city. And nobody's proposing sprawling into that or repurposing open space land. We really have to work with what we've got. Well, Laura, this sounds great on its face, but there are plenty of groups who say this is the wrong solution for affordable housing. Um, The Boulder Chamber of Commerce says the airport supports about 300 jobs, generates about $98 million a year in economic activity. Would this plan harm the city as much as it helps? We absolutely do not think that it would harm the city. It would be a net benefit in so many ways, not only for housing, but currently the airport has 13 businesses that call that property home uh, and no housing. If it were redeveloped in a similar pattern to what Boulder has seen before, and again, we are hoping that we're going to do much better than what we have done before, that there will be new innovations and be even better. But if we developed it in a similar pattern, for example, to the Holiday neighborhood, that neighborhood has 40% permanently affordable housing. We're proposing 50%. This site could support at that density about 2,000 homes and about 270 businesses compared to the 13 that are at the airport now. So it's quite difficult to imagine that the 13 businesses at the airport plus some small amount of incoming air traffic from tourism amounts to more economic benefit for the city than 2,000 homes and 270 businesses. We should also mention that the airport contributes next to nothing to Boulder's tax base and all the revenue generated by the airport as an airport, the function of like renting out hangar space, for example, it all goes back into supporting the airport. The airport actually runs in the red and it would not be self-supporting unless it had grants from the federal government. Well, what about the public safety aspect of this? Aircraft used to fight wildfires or aircraft sent out for search and rescue. Don't they need the Boulder Airport as a base? So the only significant emergency response function of our airport is through helicopters, which we absolutely recognize the values of those helicopters. For example, they were invaluable during the 2013 floods for the rescue effort that was um, was done during that flooding event. But uh, firefighting planes uh, do not use the Boulder Airport the municipal airport. It is too small, the runways are too short, and they cannot be lengthened because of geographic constraints of the terrain. Mm. So firefighting helicopters, or excuse me, firefighting planes use the Rocky Mountain Metro Airport, which is just 10 miles to our south. Now, our ballot measures, like I said, we do recognize the value of the emergency helicopters for fire, flood, and medical, and those uses would be allowed to continue on the site, even if it is repurposed. And that is specified in the ballot measure because we do recognize that value. 
I want to touch on one more point that your opponents highlight. Uh, If you shut down the airport, you're not allowed to actually close it and build on it for something like 20 years. I mean, does this push housing too far into the future? So for a community to be healthy, you've got to have um, look out into the future and be planning ahead. And so it is true that we have grant contracts that we have signed in the past that come with 20 years of what they call grant assurances that require us to continue to operate the airport for that period of 20 years. And I think we still have about 17 years left on our last grant contract. Okay. So once um, those 17 years run out, we could close the airport. Now, uh, it is possible that we might be able to negotiate a shorter timeline with the FAA, but not guaranteed. Now, is that too long to wait for housing? You know, housing in a city is a generational effort, right? You have to you have to get things lined up and then be looking to the future. And it takes time to plan. It takes time to build infrastructure. It takes time to get these things in motion. There are things being built today where we acquired the land and started the planning 20 years ago. So we view acquiring uh, the ability to repurpose the airport site as looking into Boulder's long range future. And we hope that we'd be able to start that process earlier. But even if it took 17 years, it's absolutely necessary and absolutely worth Laura, is there another city that you know of where a plan like this has worked, where they decommission, deconstruct an airport, and build affordable housing? Oh, absolutely. So um, the Stapleton neighborhood in Denver is actually a local example. Uh, It used to be an airport, and now it is a thriving neighborhood. There are two more communities in the pipeline. Santa Monica uh, has reached agreement with the FAA to close their airport. They actually are looking at building a park rather than affordable housing because that's what the voters wanted for their community. Um, And the Banning Municipal Airport in Banning, California, is the most recent example of a city that has reached agreement with the FAA for closure. They did that just about a month ago. Well, most cities consider an airport to be an asset. It has transportation benefits and other economic benefits. Is it short-sighted to tear down a permanent asset like Boulder's Airport? You know, we would not think that it's short-sighted at all. We think it's actually um, in line with the city's long-term vision of what the city needs the most. There are 10 other airports within 50 miles of Boulder, Colorado. There are three other airports within 10 miles of here. And every city does not need to have its own airport. And when we look at the pros and cons, you know, the Boulder Airport has some nice things about it. And there's a community that's passionate about it. Um, There are some people that benefit from it. Um, We're not trying to say it has no benefit, but when we look at the pros and cons, there are significant unregulated impacts from noise, from lead, from greenhouse gas emissions that are just, in our opinion, not in line with Boulder's values. Are we in the business of subsidizing private aviation or are we in the business of providing for the needs of our community? And, you know, in my mind, the need for affordable housing is so weighty, it just completely uh, overrides any consideration about should we be subsidizing private aviation. Laura Kaplan is with the Airport Neighborhood Campaign. Thank you so much, Laura, for coming on and talking about this. Thank you, Erin. If you want to learn more about this campaign, we'll have some links in the show notes and at KUNC.org. That's it for us today on In the NoCo. I'm Erin O'Toole. Thank you so much for listening.